Introduction to Risk Pooling in Supply Chains. To introduce risk pooling, I'm going to use an example of a lifeboat and determining the capacity of this li lifeboat that will be sufficient. So consider we have a large uh, cruise ship and we need to design lifeboats for it. And we assume a person's weight is normally distributed with uh, mean 160 pounds and standard deviation 30 pounds. And we assume that boats must be designed to accommodate all passengers with a very high likelihood, P99.997%. Now, cost of the boat, assume, is proportionate to the weight of uh, carrying capacity. So let's just assume that's the case. And we want to calculate savings, if there are any, uh, acc accruing from having boats to carry uh, 4, 16, or 64 persons relative to a single person uh, boat or single person boats. And then we will repeat the same exercise, assuming sigma is, is 50 instead of 30, right? pounds. So um, note that the key uh, calculation here will be, uh, as in the news vendor model, uh, will be that we need the capacity of the boat to be uh, large enough with probability P for um, a, a weight, a total weight of mu n and sigma n, where mu n and sigma n is the distribution of the weight of n persons. And now notice that, that this distribution has a mean equal to n times mean of a single person, but standard deviation, assuming independence, will be square root of n times sigma. So standard deviation will increase uh, at a slower rate. So coefficient of variation will be dropping when n is increasing. So if we do those calculations, if we do those calculations for um, uh, for the sigma 30, right? And uh, we consider number of passengers per boat, 1, 4, 16, and 64. The mean is proportionately increasing. Sigma is increasing at a slower rate with square root of n. And then we can calculate using this norm in function um, the boat capacity that is necessary to accommodate uh, one person, four people, 16 people, and 64 people. Right? And so, of course, this is a much larger boat, or right? These are numbers are much larger, but uh, right as we increase the number. Uh, but uh, notice that, of course, this number is for four people. So, if you divide by the number of people, you get capacity per person that is actually much smaller than 280.3 here, right? So, in order to accommodate all people with this probability 99.97, uh, right? This probability here. Um, we, we need much less uh, um, space and therefore much less cost when we have a boat for four people. When we have a boat for 16, capacity per person is even less, and then for 64, even less, right? So if you compare savings from the case of one person, there is 21% saving, there is 32% saving, this compared to 280 and then there is 38% of saving when we compare this case again to a single person. But if you think about incremental savings, right, comparing this to second case to the first case, there's 21%, but incrementally, so third case, comparing it to the second case, right, these two, uh, they, or actually these two, there's only 11% of saving, right? So the, the amount of saving from actually increasing the number four times, right? Here we went from one to four, right? Then we went from four to 16. So again, we increased four times. And you notice that the first time the saving was 21%, but the second time is 11%. So uh, you see there are savings in terms of cost, because if the boat, is, uh, boat cost is proportionate to the capacity that we require, we will save 21% first and then additional 11% and then additional 5%. However, those costs are at a decreasing rate as we're uh, combining more and more passengers. And I hope you see if we try sigma 50 pounds instead of 30, right? this is the difference in the second table, those decreases will be even more pronounced. So there will be 28% and then additional 14. So actually bigger decreases than in the first case. So the lifeboat example shows us that pooling 
is basically combining multiple sources of variability in order to make extreme values less likely. In the case of uh, lifeboat design, we pulled multiple sources of variability, which were the multiple uh, persons' weights together into one variability, and then the total weight of multiple passengers has less, relatively less variability, and therefore allows us to design uh, relatively smaller boats that can accommodate the, the weight of passengers with the same likelihood. So in supply chains, the objective of risk pooling strategy will be to redesign either supply chain or a production process or a product that the supply chain is delivering in order to reduce uncertainty or, again, or hedge in, or mitigate consequences of uncertainty. And you will see uh, the following risk pooling strategies in this topic. You'll see location pooling. We will try to do product pooling. Then there will be two types of what we call lead time pooling. One is called consolidated distribution. The other will be delayed differentiation. And finally, we'll talk about uh, capacity, production capacity pooling.